Welcome back, and thank you again for watching GrandCanyon.com's informational video series about the most frequently asked questions and the questions that should be asked about planning a Grand Canyon vacation. In our last video, we talked about the Grand Canyon Skywalk, where it's really at, and what it takes to get there. The Grand Canyon is the kind of place that sometimes defies logic and perception, and sometimes the logistics of getting here can do the same thing. Today we're going to talk about flying to the Grand Canyon and why closeness doesn't always equal convenience. Question number seven. What's the closest airport to the Grand Canyon? When planning a trip to anywhere, it's perfectly logical to ask, what's the closest airport to my destination? In the case of the Grand Canyon, the closest airport is Flagstaff Pulliam Airport, which is about a 90-minute drive southeast of the park. However, there are several reasons why most of you won't end up flying there, so the question that should be asked is, what airport would be the most logical for me to fly into, given the time I have to spend, and some of the other attractions I might want to see? Most Grand Canyon visitors, when looking at a map of northern Arizona, quickly come to the realization that there are a lot of other things besides the Grand Canyon that they could potentially see out here. So in the typical week-long family vacation, it's not unusual for folks to take in a loop of attractions that includes not only the Grand Canyon, but Zion, Bryce Canyon, Monument Valley, Lake Powell, or perhaps Sedona, Petrified Forest, Canyon de Chez. The possibilities were almost too numerous to mention. And while Flagstaff, Grand Canyon's closest airport, might look convenient on paper, in reality, it might prove to be somewhat inconvenient. Flagstaff Pulliam Airport is what is known as a commuter airport. This means that you won't find direct air service from cities such as New York, Dallas, Chicago, etc. Instead, you'll have to fly into Phoenix Sky Harbor and take a connecting flight from there. This means having to deal with inconveniences such as layovers that are too short or too long and worrying about whether your luggage will be transferred properly. Though conducted in smaller aircraft, the flight leg from Phoenix to Flagstaff might end up costing just as much as your flight from your point of origin to Phoenix. And if only a small number of people are booked onto a particular flight, which happens more frequently on commuter flights than on the majors, a flight may be delayed until later that day or the following day, which could put a major kink in your plans if you have non-refundable hotel or tour reservations. Considerations like these are the reason why most Grand Canyon visitors end up flying into one of two major metropolitan airports, Phoenix Sky Harbor or Las Vegas McCarran. Statistically, Las Vegas McCarran tends to be the most popular airport from which to start a Grand Canyon vacation. It's about a five-hour drive from there to the South Rim, slightly longer to the North Rim, or three hours to the West Rim. Abundance of flights and competitive pricing subsidized by the casinos make Las Vegas an even more appealing choice. And since many Grand Canyon visitors have also never been to Las Vegas, it only makes sense to combine the two destinations into one vacation. Las Vegas is also within a day's drive of Zion, Lake Powell, Bryce Canyon, Cedar Breaks, and Bryan Head, just to name a few. So it makes for a logical and fun starting point for many Grand Canyon vacations. Phoenix Sky Harbor is located south of Grand Canyon National Park. It takes approximately four and a half hours to drive from there to the South Rim. The drive from Phoenix to the canyon is definitely more scenic than that of Las Vegas to the South Rim, taking you through stands of saguaro cacti of the Sonoran Desert the lush Verde River Valley, and the San Francisco Peaks. Those opting to fly into Phoenix can easily add another scenic attraction to their southwest vacation itinerary, Sedona. Located two hours north of Phoenix and three hours south of the Grand Canyon, Sedona is renowned for its towering red rock formations, intimate riparian trails, top-notch spas, and don't forget those world-famous pink jeeps. Nearby attractions to Sedona include Montezuma's Castle, Tuzigut, and the state parks of Red Rock and Slide Rock. A few visitors even opt to fly into Phoenix and out of Las Vegas, or vice versa. This may result in somewhat steep rental car drop fees, but you might feel that the ability to visit even more attractions to be well worth the extra cost. For availability and pricing of flights and rental cars, visit GrandCanyon.com and click on the links for airline tickets or car rentals, or call 1-800-916-916. 8530. Of course, Phoenix and Las Vegas aren't the only major airports located within a day's drive of the Grand Canyon. If you'd like to know what all of your choices are, keep watching for instructions on how to order our complete Grand Canyon travel planner. With a complete listing of metropolitan and commuter airports you can utilize on your Grand Canyon vacation. As usual, thank you for watching. We hope you'll join us tomorrow as we discuss how long your Grand Canyon vacation should be and why the Grand Canyon will probably be only the beginning. <laughs>